meeting started, uh, we've asked uh, Tommy to lead us in prayer, so we'll stand, and then Larry, will you lead us in the pledge after prayer? Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for another beautiful day of life and the opportunity to be here as elected officials. Lord, we just ask that you be with us tonight in this meeting. Let us be in our hearts and minds so we make good, sound decisions for the people of Russell Springs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Tommy. Veterans, you all are here to the hand salute. Ready? I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As you work. Thank you. I call the Russell Springs July 9th regular schedule meeting to order. Uh, Chris, I need a roll call for the corn. Mr. Hull. Yes. Mr. Hudson. Here. Mr. Blakey. Here. Mr. Barnes. Here. Ms. Daniel. Here. Mr. Skaggs. Here. You have a quorum, Mayor. Thank you, Chris. Uh, first thing on the agenda is acceptance of the minutes, and this is for the regular meeting 611, and then the special call meeting 615 and 625. You had them in your packet, Chris sent them out, so uh, if there are any additions or anything to it, let us speak now. If not, I need a motion to accept the minutes. I make a motion that we accept the minutes. I'll second. Second. Roll call, Chris. Mr. Skaggs. Yes. Ms. Daniel. Yes. Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Blakey. Yes. Mr. Hudson. Yes. Mr. Holt. Yes. Passes 6 oh, The next thing is acceptance of the cash disbursements and financial statements. That's just pretty much paying the bill for the month of May. And you've had a copy of all the, the bills that we need to pay. And are there any questions on any of them? Anybody got any questions on them? It's looked over. I make a motion we pay the bills. Thank you, Tom. Need a second? Second. Go ahead, Steve. David. David. Got a second. David. Mr. Barnes. Yes. Ms. Daniel. Yes. Mr. Skaggs. Yes. Mr. Holt. Yes. Mr. Hudson. Yes. Mr. Blakey. Yes. Mr. Kirchner. Yes. The next thing is old business, and this was brought up at the last meeting by Larry. Uh, everybody should have one of these here in your packet, or it should have been on your desk if you want to pick it up and look at it. It's a uh, what it is, is Larry has asked to uh, see if we could get a parking uh, right there where the orange is. We submitted it, but we're going to have to do a little bit more investigation. We made a deal with Billy Blair that he could park his cars out in front if he would let the city put a fence right there to, to keep people from driving through there. And I think, David, you done this fence, didn't you? built that fence. and. Uh, so we, we supplied the fence and put it up, so we're going to uh, talk to David a little bit further in that. But where, where the yellow is and where the blue is, that's where we've suggested we would like a crosswalk. And we've sent this in to District 8 in Somerset. It'll have to be approved by the state, and it's a, it's a state road, so they'll mandate whether we can get one or whether we can't get one. And where the orange is, that's parking spots. Uh, Larry, we're going to check on that with them. We also put that in the letter, the email Chris did when he sent it down. But as looking at the uh, the plat of that, Chris, we we kind of checked on that with PVA. Ain't that that's listed in his name, Mo? Ain't it? That is property right there. It goes all the way out into the parking spots because he had a a drive through there. But we submitted it to the Somerset. To Tammy, so we'll just have to wait and see what they get back with us on that. But now we're going to talk to David because we did make they that was private before me as private property. And David, you build a fence and the city put it on there if I'm correct, right? Mm -hmm. So he made a deal with us. So we're going to have to just we'll have to check on that. I'll look into that a little bit further this week because I just found that out yesterday. But uh, now, Andy, what can I ask a question? 
Yeah. And I don't know if I'm looking at this one. So where the blue is and the yellow is, you would have two crosswalks? No, we're going to try to get one. Okay. We submitted that for both, both places to so get So they could decide which one. Right. Which we're, I mean, probably the way she talked, Chris, what's the chances of us getting one? Zero probably, to none. Probably zero. But she now, said she would check into it for us. Yeah, she said she'd check into it, send it on to Frankfurt. We're dealing with District 8 out of Somerset right now. I said we had to email, we had to start with them first. Now, I don't know, but for some we reason... Even, I, refresh me, where, are there any crosswalks on Main Street? Yeah, right? down at the post office. At the post office. And, office. At, the light. and at the light. Yeah. Now, look, uh, let me, Joe, you might, well, no, I ain't no man here old as me. Oh, yeah, David is. <laughs> David Smith will remember this. And David, was they a crosswalk right there in the past? Yep. Back when I was a little boy, boy. They was a, that's what I've told for I think I Back when I was a little boy, they had a crosswalk there. It went from where you got the blue square. Well, that's about exactly where it was at, where the blue square is. Or the blue. I think when they read Blacktop, they just didn't put it out back on there. Okay. And see, the state read Blacktop that wrote Chris. That might be something you might email her and tell her. And so, and so ultimately, there was one there at one time. That's, I, I remember. So we've got one at the end of Main Street and one at the post office, which really is effective in slowing people down. And, and you've got one in front of First National. That, okay, that's the one I thought that, I that. Ryder First National oh. Bank there, right? Well, Larry, we submitted it and we're trying to get one. So to get you caught up on that, as you asked about it last year last meeting so we're trying okay. to and, and I appreciate it I, I just for for I call it customer safety for anybody that that has to park over on this side and then walk across the street well that block David out of his garage a little bit well it, I don't think they're gonna let us have no parking spots right there in front of his garage anyway there where the orange is mm -hmm. we just submitted it to see what they tell us because you, you, you don't know what they're going to come back with. See, they also are a fire hydrant right there, too. And we just checked, and Melissa mm -hmm. looked it up, and the car can't be parked 15 foot within that fire far, that far hydrant anyway. So it'd be 15 foot each way, so that would be 30 foot each way. So, so ultimately, the most we probably can get out of that is two spaces if we're lucky. If we get one, we'd probably get lucky from what, I'm looking at, what I looked at yesterday. Okay. You Thank never you know. for your trouble. I appreciate it. Okay. All righty. Uh, any, any other discussion on that? Okay. We're going to move on to new business. Uh, city pool is open at the city park. Uh, the basketball goals have been, uh, the boards took off of them where they can play. The playground equipment is untaped and they can use it. This has been brought. Jonathan Dye contacted us and emailed us and gave us a call last week. The park is fully opened right now. Now whether it stays or not without the announcement today, I don't know. But it is fully open. Everything's, they've done played two weeks of ba baseball, getting ready to start their third week. So Little League, Pee Wee, and Coach Pitch and all that's going on. And uh, I don't know how long, I hope they get to finish. Their last game is the end of August, first week of August. So. They've got about three weeks, so I'm hoping they can get it in before anything happens. And uh, the uh, hospital is using the pool Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 9 to 10. And the high school swim team is practicing Tuesdays and Fridays two days a week using the pool. So everything's pretty much being used over there. And uh, if you drive through, it looks pretty good right now. I'm really tickled with being... The COVID virus going and stuff, how it does look because we didn't get to do a whole lot, but it, it does look really good. And it, they put new sand in the volleyball court. The bark park looks good, Cherry. I mean, it, it, it's looking pretty good over there. I'm, I'm, I'm tickled with it. Well, I've got a question, or just based on what I had heard about the mandatory mask thing, that's not going to be our responsibility, is it? Isn't the health department supposed to? enforce the wearing of masks? Well, it ultimately gets back to the we are responsibility, ultimately. But initially, aren't they supposed to be the ones that say? They're going to have to determine what the end 
he's going to be right. and how, that, how specifically they want to address, but ultimately they'll call the law enforcement to enforce it, but they'll have to give a dictated means for it to be addressed. So as a mandatory mask. As of 5 o'clock tomorrow, if you're in public, this was what the governor said today, yeah, best I understood it. Mm -hmm. If you are out anywhere in a front-facing business, you will be you will be required to wear a mask. It's a mandatory requirement. What KRS will that fall under? It 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 actually will fall under just a file under the orders from the executive authority of the governor. Just an emergency. Kind of like when this first started. Is there a fine attached to that? I don't know. That's what Joe they, was saying. We don't know what the penalties are or anything. Yeah, but they, haven't, they haven't said anything to my knowledge yet. But that basically was that was the, the rule or the order today was mandatory masks. That's going to be fun to watch down the lake, watch it be enforced. <laughs> That's going to really be fun. We don't have to worry about that down at the lake. All we well, have to no, worry about is what's going on in the I know. Requiring everybody to wear it. So that's open air over in the park. I know it's it is. wide open. To me, it's stupid, but let's, get, let's get back on the city yeah. park here. That's <laughs> what we, uh, that's, that was the topic of discussion. Uh, does anybody have any questions about the park or anything going on over at the park? I'm glad it's open. Good. Yeah, <coughs> me too. Me too. Tickle to that. Has anybody else got anything? That's all the agenda before I do the mayor's report, get into some special things we got going on here tonight. Are we still up in the air about a fall festival, lady? Is that still tentative? The, what? the fall festival. As of right now, but we. You, I mean, it's, I know, I'm not yeah. putting you on the spot, but. Yeah. I mean, we sent the money secured to artists, so. I and now we just have to wait and see. It's, yeah, that ain't going to be up to us. And no. since you brought that up, I wasn't going to mm -hmm. bring this up. But the JCs is having a demolition derby tomorrow night. And they called us. And the city wouldn't make a call on it. So we pushed it back on the health department because the health department, Jonathan Dine, them has made every decision. Mm -hmm. They ain't let the city. So Jonathan Dine, the health department, said it was a goal for them. So it's a goal for them. And that was okay not by the county judge or the mayor. That was okay by the health department. So, anybody else got anything? Okay, just got a few things here on the mayor's update. Bobby Dunbar has uh, invited the council and all of us to the uh, jail. July the 24th at two o'clock, he's gonna have a flag raising out there and they've been doing a lot of work, the inmates and stuff, cause they can't get out and work nowhere so he's had them around the jail there working and it looks looks really good down there and uh, so he's invited all the council and the mayor and, and the police and, and the fire and everybody to a flag raising ceremony july the 24th at two o'clock if you want to write that down and then uh, abc and the police building if you look at it out there it's doing it, it looks like we're not doing nothing right now but rick now's doing all the iron inside right now so we're still moving along we're probably 45 to 50 percent done with it right now and they were supposed to lay the brick the first of the week on the front of it so once they get that done we should have it all dried in after we get the windows and the doors in it then we'll just lock the inside and then we want to thank uh, everyone who's dropped off food here for our police and our fire department that means a lot to us with everything that's going on right now we've uh, we appreciate it we've had two or three different people and and, and different organizations to drop food off. And man, we appreciate it, didn't we, Joe? Absolutely. And uh, we do, because one of them, we really we really needed it, and they was out on the, all day uh, hunting down the three criminals. I wanna thank the police department for catching them the second time and putting them in jail. So thank y'all very much. And uh, they got back and asked food for them, so that, that really meant a lot to them and me and us. So. And then the next thing is the T.J. Sampson Open House, August 7th at noon. They're going to have an open house and a ribbon cutting up by Walgreen, between Walgreen and Watkins Vision there. That's the new building there is built. That's going to be the new T.J. Sampson uh, Health Clinic. So if you want to clear your schedule for that, uh, I know uh, we, I got a text yesterday, and uh, Mr. Thornburg would really like for us to show up or something of us. So. It would really be important to them if we show up. So 
That's it. And then the next thing, this meeting tonight is really not about the city of Rust Springs. It's not about us. It's about Joe Michael and what he means to the city of Russell Springs. And uh, he is retiring the end of the month. And uh, I got a plaque for him, and they uh, they put the wording on it. And, and I tell you what, I hope I can get through reading this because it uh, going up here, Joe. It it, uh, it 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 it's horrible. He means the city. He says, "Your brothers and sisters, co-workers and friends, salute your success. We are inspired by your strong work ethic, motivated by your fearless attitude, and humbled by your loyalty." Thank you for all your wisdom and help during our adventures together. Thank you for 24 years of loyalty and dedication to service to the, the people of the city of Russell Springs. We will always be there for you, and you will always have a home here, the city of Russell Springs. I'm going to tell you something. Them words couldn't have been right no better. If everybody had the dedication that we had working in this city as he's at, we'd be in, in the city would be a milestone for people. Joe, appreciate you. Man, you've been special to me. Appreciate you, Joe. I know you're a man of many words, so if you want to say anything, you're more welcome. <laughs> I really do appreciate that. Wow. And going on with that, uh, Starting August 1, Melissa is our assistant chief. She will be the interim chief. We're going to take about 30 or 60 days and, and take a deep breath, and then we're going to start taking applications, and then we're going to have the League of Cities come in with us and go through the application process, and then we'll move forward from there. So that's kind of our vision for the future, but I know I love Melissa, and, and you're a good police, police lady, but Joe Michael has, has they're going to be big, big, big shoes to fill, I'm telling you, because I've known him on this side of the fence and I know him on the other side and he treats you fair both ways. And there ain't many people that does that. Anybody else got anything? I want to say thank you to the police. I've noticed your presence and a lot of people have commented on your presence uh, and slowing down around the traffic in Russell Springs and I really appreciate that. It's just good to see you guys out and I'm very proud of you guys. And thank you again, Joe Michael, for all your service. It's been an honor, and I've worked with you at the jail and in different places. And thank you, sir, for your service, not only to this country, but the city. Appreciate You're going to be missed, Joe. I'll have to say that. I worked, your daddy was my boss, and I've known you since you was a little kid. Like Eddie says, it doesn't matter if you're on the bad side of the law or the good side. You've always treated people fairly and you've earned the respect I think of just about pretty much everybody I know especially all of us in the city and and you are going to be a tough act to follow as far as I'm concerned appreciate it Mayors. I appreciate you little brother I'll just keep it short and sweet maybe a lot to be said but time is out of essence Appreciate the job you've done. Appreciate your service to your country and to your community. Appreciate it. Nothing else? I need a adjournment. I make a motion. motion. We, I make a motion we adjourn this meeting. Got a motion from Larry. Need a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank y'all. Appreciate y'all. Did y'all be around for pictures after the meeting? <laughs> Autographs? No yeah. kiss. No kiss. John, thank you, buddy. You got my email address.